and welcome to Trailer Talk TV. Today we've got James and Kevin in the office. James, how are you doing? Great, glad Great. to be here. Great to have you in the office. Today we're talking about the unbundling of retail media technology and the future of commerce media and retail media. And James has come into the, the office today to talk a little bit, a bit about that. But before we do that, James, can you just introduce yourself and a bit about the company as well, please? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my name is James Avery. I'm the founder and CEO of Kevl. Uh, and we are a company that provides the technology for marketplaces, retailers, fintech to build really next generation ad platforms. And Kevil have actually probably stumbled into one of the biggest opportunities in ad tech uh, because great technology companies always do. Um, they're kind of underpinning a lot of sort of the sell side and retail media and commerce. But I want to talk a bit about that before we jump into sort of the future because we had a great conversation initially uh, before, the, before this um, a video about what's the future of, of the retail media space. But Kevil, um, interesting company. Um, I want to talk about where you sit in the stack and how you work with commerce media and retail media companies. Yeah, absolutely. So I mean, really, we like you said earlier, we're on the supply side. So our focus is on you know retailers, marketplaces, you know people like food delivery apps, people like Klarna, Delivery Hero. They use our platform to build out their ad platform. Yeah, because we all know like the opportunity retail media is, but then how do you how do you get there? Yeah, you know, uh, and we basically enable them to go a lot faster. Okay, can you can we sketch out what the what the what the ecosystem looks like in a minute? Because yeah, yeah. there's a lot of hype around retail media, and I can there was so many panels, so many discussions about what is the future. But I think this uh, the nuance this needs to be kind of described a little bit more and where it could go because we're kind of at the very early stages of, of of this process. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So should we from a I mean, I guess, you know, like everything else, right? It's like demand and supply. Yeah. Right? And so over here we have, you know, people like Klarna, uh, you know, Tesco, whoever we want to pick, right? Yeah. And I think what we see today is that there's a lot of apps or a lot of companies, right, that are like this. Like in the old days where they're yeah. providing theirs, you know, on the supply side, like fundamentally you need an ad server, yeah. right? You need something to, to really decide when and where an ad should be shown, how it should be priced, what keywords you should target, what SKUs you should target, all of that, right? And then over here somewhere you have, uh, you know, not technically an ad server, but you have some sort of demand source, right? Yeah. Like, and it's, it's hard to actually write what it is because today it's kind of, it's, it's like it's direct sales. Exactly. It's it's, like, there's a lot going you know, on. There's... So we'll say like direct IOs, you know, and then you also have self-serve. All right, so companies build out, you know, self-serve so that you can go into Tesco and say, I want to, you know, promote these items or mm -hmm. I want to buy this ad unit yeah. uh, through like a self-serve interface. Yeah. And then I'd say like over here too, you have like the like pack views and, and people like that that are kind of aggregating self -service. Yeah, it's the kind yeah. of like build into the Amazon and you can see what's how your ads are performing and all the rest of it. So you guys sit, sit squarely in this sort of bracket here yep. and, and, and you kind of sort of build the framework. I mean, you work with Clara, so talk about your relationship with them. How do you build their tech and how do you use it? Yeah, so I mean, like we're, we're an API-based company, so we're like similar to something like Twilio or even like Amazon Web Services yeah. where they're building on top of our APIs. Yeah. So we're not going in and like doing it for them. Right. Uh, but we partner, or they, they use our tech to build out that ad serving capability. Mm -hmm. And then in their case, like they built the self-serve, they built their own self-serve on top of our APIs. And that sort of satisfy a lot of the endemic uh, demand that they, are, they, they have for their site. So I mean, yeah. uh, they, they build out sort of, you know, ads on page, product listings, all the rest of it. So you can uh, in, enable them to sell that into their own clients. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And then they, I mean, they do direct IOs as well, right? Like for large brands that, that they have a partnership with. Uh, and so like the demand always looks, I mean, the other one I'd add here, right? Is like ad networks. What well, run by the, the likes of Tesco's and Sainsbury's uh, sort of like, or, or, or no, really like the, the third party ones, right? right? So it's like, you can have, like, if we look at somebody like a Criteo or a Citrus, yeah. Right, like they're they have people doing direct IO. Yeah, they're providing the self serve, and then yeah. they have like their yeah. ad network where yeah. they're going to a brand and saying, buy across all of the retailers that use us. Yeah, yeah. Right. So this is sort of early innings, right? I just feel that this is sort of like, there's a lot of hype around retail media. A lot of uh, column inches written about it. A lot of panels discussing it. And it just feels that it's a messy space right now, right? Well, and it feels like it's really consolidated, right? Like yeah. Like, early, like, remember, like, mobile, when mobile was Yeah, yeah, in, yeah. You know, it was like, oh, there's, like, one thing in mobile, right? It was like, 
you know, they, they were the company that was selling the ads and, and uh, you know, running the ad network and they had the ad server and it was all bundled together. Yeah. And then over time, we just always see it start to pull apart. Okay, right? let, let, okay this is good because like, I think this is where we want to be talking right now. So initially, we're talking about the early stages of, of this, uh, this, this is sort of new category. Um, you have uh, sort of consolidated across demand and, and, uh, and sell side, and there is almost everything like direct I/O, self-service, ad networks. It's a bit messy on the on demand side because people are still figuring out what is this. But we, we were talking about this uh, before we were on camera that there is there is going to be a really really interesting opportunity. From my perspective, I, I do think that a lot of the uh, retail media and commerce media are rightly. Um, obsessed about UX because their goal is to sell stuff on site. Yeah, it? yeah. It's not necessarily to sell ads to sort of like pay for content. It's actually, we need to sell more Frosties or we need to sell more milk or we need to sell yeah, more yeah. sausages or whatever it might be. So, so it feels to me that that's the wrong, ad tech's taking the wrong direction. It's all about ads. It really isn't, is it? Um, there's, there's a real big opportunity around product listings, right? Which seems to be like the, the natural progression for where these things go. So I want to talk to you a bit, a bit about this because you were talking about beforehand and you do see a sort of demand and supply piece and a demarcation between coming. Yeah. And I want to talk yeah. about that. And I also want to talk about where that product listings thing might become really interesting. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think like the, what you were saying earlier, we call that like, it's like first is first do no harm. Yeah. Right? Like it's like the, the code of retail media and marketplaces. Like the first thing is you can't hurt Don't your, annoy the customer. You can't hurt your conversion yes. rates. You can't hurt the core business. Like that's the golden goose. Yeah. And so ad tech and advertising is just a, you know, accelerant on top of that. Yeah. But you can't, you can't like, you know, like a traditional publisher might, you know, make more compromises. Yeah, we put like some extreme or yeah, yeah, to yeah put exactly. On there. But like retailers and marketplaces like, have can't to be super that. careful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, and so then, yeah, so we talked about, you know, like in traditional ad tech, right? Like these, these always start to shift because the companies on this side want somebody who has their best interest at heart and is building for the supply mm -hmm. and the demand. You know, they have different needs and requirements. Yeah, right. And like, what does Procter and Gamble want? Exactly. From a demand side. Yeah. And, you know, what does, you know, Tesco want from a supply side, mm. right? And those things start to differ. And that's why you, I think you see the tech start to slide on both sides. Yeah. And when we talk about this too, like I didn't fill in other stuff here, but there's, with retail media, there's also, you know, lots of really tricky stuff like attribution and like catalog uh, management, right? And those are things today that where attribution can be pretty contentious. Right yeah. of like who you know what does Procter and Gamble consider? Is know, it a incremental? sale? Is what do they consider sale? incremental? Yeah. What does the supply consider yeah. incremental? Yeah, and you know how does that kind of arbitrate it? Yeah. So can we talk a little bit about the product listings piece because that's where I suppose the likes of Citrus Ad and and Critio have got some sort of traction with, particularly Critio with, with the Hook Logic acquisition. That's kind of where they got their in. But I feel that there is a big opportunity around that because having spoken to a few DSPs and which I won't name on camera that there's going to be a big play around taking like all those skews and being able to sort of sort of galvanize demand around and not necessarily around the top CPG brands. There's huge opportunity in the mid to long tail, particularly yep. around DTC. I want to talk about where you, where you think this is going to go because I, I, I just have my own opinion about it, but I'd love to hear from someone who's actually in yeah, the trenches. Yeah. Like. yeah, so if you, if you think about like a, big, like a big grocery chain, yeah. right? Like they're, they don't need somebody else to sell to Procter & Gamble for. No. Right, like they have a direct relationship with Procter and Gamble. They yeah. can go and sell yeah. display and promoted listings and everything. Yeah, right? trade budget space. But then, yeah, the next the next question is yeah, like that middle stack of your a you know middle sized brand that maybe is in the store, but you're not you know you're not a huge buyer. You mm -hmm. don't have a ton of shelf space. You know how are you going to buy? Mm -hmm. Right, and like you're going to want to buy through like some sort of DSP. Yes. Right. Like that's what Why we not? learned. Exactly. Like, like exactly. you know, Trade Desk and people like that have built yeah. amazing tech for advertisers. Mm -hmm. Like they don't want to. Give that up and go to you know. I'm just busy like reinvent the wheel. Or exactly. Right? Yeah. And so like yeah. So we think that there's when you look at the supply side, and you think about what's going on here, right? Like on a retailer's site, you know, I come in and I'm I'm searching, or I'm picking a category, right? You have just like the endemic products that show up. Yeah. And the challenge with a lot of these people that are trying to turn it into an ad network is that they're trying to put like a, a fake ad in here, 
right? Like an ad that looks like a product. Right. And maybe it clicks and maybe it goes to the same site, but a lot of times there's mismatches on, on what exactly you want. And these companies have invested millions and millions of dollars in like their relevancy. Right, right. right? And so like they've spent a ton of money on like these should be the right items that show up. Because it, 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 it increases the, the, the sales. And, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and that's, yeah. The, that's the do no harm, yeah, right? Like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. if you start putting in a, a non-relevant ad here. When you say non-relevant, right? you think non-endemic ad, like, like a bloody insurance ad or a car ad yeah, or something or even, like that. or even like a product, like if you come in here and you search for crisps and then you get something that's like close, yeah. right? You get Coca-Cola. Like does that, maybe the margin on the crisps is way better for the store and that's yeah. why they wanted that first. Yeah. Right? And so they're happy if the crisp company wants to promote it. Yeah. But they don't want Coca-Cola there. Okay. Right? Like who decides that? Like the supply side should decide that. Right. right? Like that's their site. And so like what, what I believe is going to happen is that, you know, these do all have SKUs, mm. right? And there are SKUs across all these different retailers. They're different, but they all align back to things that the brand knows. Right. Right? And so the way we work today is that when you search here, you know, and then this organic list, we actually send that, that list of SKUs to our engine to decide what should serve. Right. So like if Procter & Gamble wants to promote an item here, they're promoting something that's already endemically showing up. Right. But it's not that big of a leap to say like normally, you know, this is going to us, Kevl, but then, you know, we could pass that to a DSP. Yes. Right? And we can tell that DSP, hey, look, these are all the SKUs that are available in this search result. Here's who that person is or mm. what we know about them, mm. right? Like, do they normally buy this? Do they not normally buy it? What other data do you have? Yeah. What data does the brand have, mm. right? Like, it'd say, oh, this person used to always buy Pampers, but then they started buying Huggies. Yeah. And I'm going to pay a lot to put Pampers yeah. right here because I want that buyer back, Yeah. right? And so, like, the DSP wants to have all that control. And so we really think there's there's this big opportunity to you know both separate it, but then also create like a real connection. Yeah, like a proper programmatic supply, supply chain. Yeah. And this would be like uh, this would be like stuff that P, you know CPGs and DTC brands would want to buy because you're set, you're basically supplying information here that they can bid on, and this will all become biddable impressions basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then the other key part here too, right, is because we have a tight integration. We get, you know, we can get full order logs, right? And so if you know the full order log and you can handle returns and things like that, then we can actually also ship like true attribution data. So you could actually show the sales on those specific uh, um, ads to the full yeah, yeah. attribution model. Yeah, so then right. the DSP can start to bid. They can build their models on ROAS and, and wow. how do they want to bid wow, to wow, get wow, that wow, attribution, wow. right? Like that's where we're going. We're not there yet, I, but like I, that's, so where, this that's is, the future, this, right? this, is, this is the most interesting conversation I've had about this so far because I think that we've had this kind of like, you know, we'll just do programmatic 2.0, right? But the reality is, as you said, as we've just pointed out, the UX is so important and the user experience is so important to the, the retailers and commerce media. Like, you know, Uber's not going to start doing this nonsense. Like, they're going to serve ads, but they're going to do it in a way that suits the Uber sort of experience. And other sort of people like Clarence are not going to start serving ads for the sake of serving ads and just boost increase you because it's going to piss off so many of their customers. Yeah. So the fact that you can take one of the most important pieces, like, as you said, spent millions of pounds on on these product listings around search, because search is still a huge issue, and then being able to kind of take that information and pass it to a trade desk or a DV360 or a media math and allow the buyers to bid on that, but then being able to take the full attribution model makes it super interesting. That makes yeah. it like, and the, it, you know. Yeah, and it ties back, like when we talk about retail a lot, it's easy to talk about like e-commerce, but also yeah. any of the, like we work with Delivery Hero, right? So same thing, if McDonald's wants to be able to to buy promotions across yeah. 100 different delivery apps yeah. or 10 different delivery apps, right? Like like stuff like that can all be pushed through through the DSP, mm. which is where we know brands want to mm. buy, mm. right? Whether it's it could be programmatic guaranteed, it could be, you know, PMP deals, it yes. could be open exchange, yes. right? Like all the stuff that we built already like, on, already can be. How do we just leverage yeah. if like if this connection's built? Yeah. yeah. Do you think that there's a there, there, that that just thinking beyond that that there's going to be an interesting sort of play around? trade budgets, right? So think about this way, if you, you know, you have rela existing relation between CPGs and Tesco, but you alluded to the point that there might be some smaller brands that could start pushing money out into other areas. Like, so Kevl, for instance, is, it could be like the, one of the best, one of the biggest sort of commerce media SSPs, right? There's no reason why they couldn't say ad server SSP full stack on the sell side. 
you could actually aggregate quite a lot of like second and third tier and start being able to give um, brands the opportunity to sell across all those things to those audiences that could be way more interesting, which means that trade budgets start shifting around a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Do you think that's a situation that could happen? Yeah, well, I think there, and there's like the, the trade budget stuff, I've learned way more about it than everyone else. I mean, know, I, I'm like, yeah. Like sometimes it is like a guaranteed thing, right? Yeah. Where it's like, oh, for the shelf space, we agree to spend this exactly. much. Exactly. And like that's another thing where, let's say, you know, let's say whatever company, Procter & Gamble is agreeing to spend $100 million with Sainsbury's as part of this trade spend. If it now goes through one of these big stacks, they're paying 20%. Yes. To, Whoever, yeah, right. Whereas if you start to go through this stack, you know, yeah, maybe they're paying a DSP fee, yeah, but there's not somebody in between, yeah. And they could even like with a DSP, you could even settle the commercials outside of it, yeah, right. Like you could agree to to do that payment directly, mm. and so like this gives a lot more flexibility as that trade budget goes online, yeah. Because if they take a hundred million and then it goes online and they get seventy percent of it, like that's pretty terrible yeah, outcome yeah, yeah, for, yeah, the, yeah. for the supplier. Um, and then I think, but when you talk about like the long, like the the medium tail, mm. right? I think, especially on the supply side, you know, the big brands don't want to go to 50 different self-serves. No. But I, mean, it, but I don't because think an ad it's, it's, impo it's impossible. It's impossible. And like, yeah. as you say, we've had a situation where multiple ag networks have worked and then the DSPs have kind of replaced that because they want an aggregated buy, right? Yep. There's a reason why the trade desk is a $36 billion business because they've aggregated a lot of that thing. And I just, you know, speaking to Jeff Green about this, he's, he's as enthusiastic about you that this is going to happen in the next sort of Yeah, yeah, no, he said it, I remember on a, like an earnings call. Yeah. He was like, he thinks the majority of promoted listings will get bought through yeah. trade. Yeah, which is exciting yeah. because I think that, you know, you could, you could end, Kevin could end up working with like 100 um, marketplaces globally and being able to give them this sort of ability to tap into spend that they could never do with, with sort of IO yeah, yeah. managed service. Yeah, no, and we work with 100 today. We'll there you go, there you go. A thousand's the next stop. A thousand's the next stop. <laughs> So how close are we to this, do you reckon? Like, because you were talking about, is there an IAB tech lab thing, or is, so this, that's is we're, something we're, you're thinking about, or? Yeah, I mean, I think we're either, I think we'd love to start it with IAB tech lab. Yeah. Um, we've been kind of putting our thoughts around, like, how this works. We've yeah. been talking to some of the DSPs. Yeah. Uh, but the next step is a working group. Right? Yeah. And to say, like, let's either, either we'll do it with the tech lab or on our own. Very and, exciting. And hopefully the tech lab, because I think this is, there's a lot of potential here. Do you think that there's an opportunity as well? Because obviously not every marketplace, I'm just kind of pointing out some, some obvious sort of glaring flaws. Every marketplace would n not necessarily have a DTC brand uh, sort of in their own fulfillment order or their own sort of warehouse. So is there a way for them to still buy here and able to sort of sell on the site? Like we were talking about before, is there another, le another stage where you can you know, click and, and, and still be on market site so the market site can market uh, place can still make money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, I think we we're talking about, I don't, I don't remember the name of the company, but there's a couple of them out there yeah. that are, that are helping to start facilitating yeah. the idea that you have an ad that's a, you know, third party DTC brand, yeah. but it's still fulfilled through the same cart. Yeah. And then basically drop ship. Yeah. Right. And so that, that creates another entry or another interesting way to do that. Mm. And then the trick there is is really controlling that relevancy. Yes. And so, and that's where, you know, we have a lot of relevancy logic that we can pull in from the, the supplier so they can tell us the relevancy of things. Mm -hmm. And we'd have to figure out what's the relevancy of that DTC item. And right? I, I guess that's the beauty of working with you guys is that you're able to feed that information and the, the, the retailer, uh, the commerce media entity has complete control of what appears here. Like, right. So yep. they've got like, which, which then makes it easier for buyers because if you're able to feed that through to uh, uh, DSP, it means they're not wasting money just buying across things that they shouldn't even be buying across. Yeah, I mean, like today we get we get thousands of updates a second to our customers' catalogs. Yeah, like for things like stock. Yeah, because like how often in a system where they're not as tightly connected, like one of these larger ad networks. Yeah, you might be promoting an item that's out of stock. Yeah, right, and that's right. the last thing that a brand wants. To so do. basically, you're able to feed that as well through. True the, yeah, well, the, we wouldn't even send it, right? Yeah. Like we would basically we would we would only send the SKUs yeah. that are in stock that you know, are relevant to that user. Uh, mm. And then we can even include, uh, we can like, once we get the bid back, we can adjust the bid based on the relevancy. Yeah. Kind of like the quality score that, that Google has. Yeah. Do the same thing to say, oh, if you're all the way down here and you want to move up here, that costs a lot more yeah. than moving here to here. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why this is a bigger opportunity in the CTV. It's an amazing opportunity here. We're huge and uh, I'm delighted to have had Kevin in the office today 
the most important company in retail media. I agree. So James, thanks for your time today. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me. And we'll, we'll no doubt go back into this over the next couple of months. There's some fascinating stuff going on. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And that was Trader Talk TV, and we will see you next time. Thank you.